years and from the early days, seven years ago, we, we, we launched in Johannesburg and we, we realized that Africa is, 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 is a really, is, is, is really a land of opportunity and that we had to, we had to expand to expand to, to Africa. And we, we also realized that it's not some, not a, not a region that you can copy and paste the approach that we have in, let's say, the U.S. or in or, or in Europe, we have to really do our best to to, to understand market um, nuances and, and develop products that that actually talk to talk to talk to the people. I think I think that's a, that's the one, and it's an interesting one. Kugura in, uh, in in Nairobi, we've obviously got um, we've launched um, a Boda Boda product, so you can request an Uber uh, Uber Boda through your app, where they can pick you up on a on a motorbike. Um, West Africa side, we've had a we piloted a, a, a boat product. Um, so obviously to, to combat the combat the chronic traffic traffic there. And I think the other thing that's becoming more and more um, top of mind these days, especially because of the, the the pandemic leaving economies in tatters, it's it's people are just so much more price sensitive than they than they were in the past. And and the way to keep people moving is to is to offer as low cost as possible offerings, and um, and that's 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 where we're going. We need to make sure that we're accessible to 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 communities, and that while we're accessible at an affordable rate for communities, we also need to make sure that um, that that the products work for the driver partners that um, that that use use the platform. So. Um, I think we we're really excited to to continue to grow in Africa. We we know that we've still got a lot to learn. Only got seven years of experience, so hopefully I can learn something out of this platform, out of this panel that we can take back and and just go from strength to strength. Fantastic. Thank you very much for that. And you've actually addressed some of the points that I'm going to ask some questions about later because Africa is vast, you know, it's very, very vast. So you can be in one section of, of the continent and the setup is totally different in another section. So trying to, you know, trying to balance that out when you're exploring that new terrain must be quite, quite a thing. Um, so Kagure, could you please introduce yourself um, and tell us a bit more about yourself and what you're doing in terms of the future mobility in Africa? Okay, uh, so I'm Kagure Wamonyo, the Chief Strategy Officer at Kogo 360. So in my role, I oversee uh, the strategic projects um, focused on growth of the company. Uh, so as uh, Kobo started about two, two years ago um, as a in Nigeria, Lagos, Nigeria, before expanding out of Nigeria into other markets. And so specifically in East Africa, we are in Kenya and Uganda. Uh, we also have offices in Togo, Ivory Coast and Ghana. So six countries, but having uh, 16 countries in Africa. And that's again, due to the nature of logistics. Uh, what we do, we are a tech aggregator. So as Fran said, um, we were once colleagues uh, during our time at Uber, and we really, are a company that have taken lessons from what has happened on the movement of people in the aggregation of logistics in the people side and really applied the same lessons and the movement of cargo. Uh, one of the most challenging areas um, in Africa, but also an area of opportunity. For as long as we cannot trade with each other as African countries, we will remain um, not able to, you know, increase growth and increase our GDPs because it's just vast opportunities in the market. And so that is what we do. Uh, we promote inter-Africa trade. Uh, we use technology to create efficiencies. But at, same, at the same time, we face a lot of challenges because we are also in a sector that's heavily government reliant. We need good roads, to put it simply. We need to decrease congestion. And so this is what we work with. But right now, uh, we've seen massive growth in the work that we're doing and also great opportunities in what we can do to improve our mobility in the continent. Yeah, that's fantastic. I, I like the fact that you're trying to promote inter-country trade in, in Africa. I mean, it seems like something that is very obvious, but it's something that we've been um, limited in, very limited in. I myself, I'm, I'm from Ghana and, and knowing what the roads are like and knowing what the congestion is like, I mean, it drives me nuts. I have to get up hours earlier just to get somewhere on time 
or just leave hours later just so that I'm not stuck in traffic. And I'm thinking in terms of the mobility, apart from the geography of where it is in Africa, the logistics and the infrastructure is a big, big issue. You know, it, a lot of contracts are government contracts. Is there anything that you guys are doing? I'll, I'll come over to you first, friends, and then I'll go to, back to you, Kagura, in terms of what your plans are for the future that can help to improve that or takes that into account. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think it's, it's an interesting, interesting question. So there's, there's definitely uh, infrastructure, um, things that, that, that affect our businesses. Same as Kagura said, if, if, if the roads are bad, the driver partners are cars are going to get damaged if if the mapping is poor then um we, we, we we're going to struggle to get from a to b in, in cities and these are these are real issues that we that we have i think an interesting um platform that we built over the last few years is is it's called uber movement and uber movement takes our aggregated uh, trip data and um We've, we've put it together and mapped the cities and made it publicly available to, to policymakers, to city planners, to um, government officials, businesses, to get access to this data. And it allows them to plan, I suppose, infrastructure developments. If you see this road is getting X amount of traffic, there is an opportunity to invest in this specific highway versus another one. So it's just using our data and it's, it's real time, real time data that 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 we use to share. So I think that's the that's that's the one, um, and I'm, I'm hoping that the, that governments are actually using using this to 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 build the cities that we that we partner with. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Kagure. Yes, so as I was discussing about the importance of information in creating efficiencies that often, that reduces the congestion issues we face. So in our case, it's, it, it's track owners knowing that they do not need to park for four days at the port to be able to load. They can find out when cargo is ready and when there's cargo availability and then they drive and pick up the loads. So reducing this massive, um, if you take, for example, the port of Apapa, trucks are packed miles and miles away just waiting for cargo to be able to arrive. And I, I think information is quite critical in being able to promote this. Um, the second thing is when you match cargo, uh, we have a system, in our system, we have what we call reverse logistics, where a truck is able to load, the same truck that went and picked cargo from Nairobi to Kampala is the same one that will come back with cargo from Kampala to Nairobi. What this does is that you do not need two tracks to do the same job because information is actually accessible through the app and it, um, in addition to increasing earnings for the track owner and for the driver, it now also ensures that you have less number of tracks required to do the same job. Thank you, thank you very much. So information is key. That's what I've got from both you and France. You're trying to collate information and share information so that things get better in the long run. If you can't do the big infrastructure projects and stuff that are up to the governments to do, you know, at the end of the day. Um, do, do any of the um, attendees have any questions that they want to send through? Um, we'd love to see any questions that we can give to our speakers. <laughs> Please write it in the chat here. Um, I will continue. <laughs> So we've spoken about some of the challenges and we've spoken about some of the things that we can do to improve it. Um, what, what are you most hopeful about um, in terms of why Africa? I mean, I've heard so many people speaking about Africa being the new frontier, it's where the new business is and everything like that. So, you know, could you tell us more about that? Um, Kazure. Okay. Uh, what we're hopeful for, for us, it's the Con Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement. Uh, the, the agreement is the largest agreement in terms of number of participating countries outside since the creation of the World Trade Organization. It creates one market in Africa. What this means is that we can now move cargo from say all the way from Morocco to Kenya something that was impossible because of the number of barriers, the number of custom clearances that are needed. This 
makes the opportunity all of a sudden you don't see each you know each market as its own you see the continent as an opportunity so the, uh, the agreement is expected to increase trade in africa by about 52 percent mm -hmm. and we're talking about a 3.4 trillion dollar market um, in terms of logistics and trade and so this is exciting it's a great opportunity for us and i think even as governments are building rail they're building roads it means that the challenges that's why they will continue to decrease because frankly it is a challenge where governments acknowledge is an issue and so it's a market that continues to grow the third thing is that mobile penetration continues to grow so there's factors that continue to promote this innovation by companies, whether it's in the payment sector, whether it's in technology, whether it's in products that we do, for example, um, sorry, uh, for example, products that focus on payment. Um, traditionally, everything is paper based. You tell somebody, oh, here is tech. They're like, oh, what is tech? Here is a piece of paper you need to sign. Um, and that's what we work with. But what we're seeing with things um, such as the challenges created by COVID, people are adopting tech. They are realizing that indeed you can do business without having to see someone face to face or someone delivering paper. So all these things are coming together. The growth of the middle class in Africa also means that um, there is more manufacturing happening. There's more construction. There's more movement of food. And again, it makes it uh, an optimistic, it makes me optimistic in what we're doing. And ultimately, when you create efficiencies, you bring down costs. Mm -hmm. When you bring down costs in Africa, the cost of logistics is about 20 to 40%, depending on the, on, on the goods uh, and which market you are in. That is a huge cost burden all because of the inefficiencies that exist. And so just being able to create efficiencies brings down the cost of goods, means more and more people can afford something and so that excites me and makes me optimistic thank you very much yeah cost cost is very relevant france was mentioning the cost in that sense as well in terms of cost with uber um in africa um france what are you hopeful for so uh a lot of what kagura says is are the things that 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 get me excited about get me excited about about africa i think i we've we, we, we came to Africa and we came out of the US with with a product that we that we had to to try and force in to work with 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 the with the, the local markets and I think I, I alluded to it earlier um, I'm excited that we're figuring out over time how um, how we need to talk to to people in Africa and really create a product or products that that talk to talk to people in Africa I'm excited that we, we, we came in and we were only able to address a certain certain market and as we expand our suite of products. Uh, and I, I, I love using Nairobi as an example. We've got every single option there. You can get a, a more premium vehicle. You can get a smaller um, little hatchback vehicle. You can get a motorbike, you can get a tuk-tuk, depending on what, your, what your, your use case is. And we need to make sure that we're talking to everybody there and everybody has access. I think the other thing is, is is um, sort of smartphone access. It's getting better and better. Data is getting better and better. Um, something that we struggled with initially is we've quite a heavy app. So um, we and I think because we started as a US business, it like data was never something that we that we as a as a company thought was would be a problem. And as we've expanded into more developing nations in India, for example, Pakistan, Middle East have very similar problems to. To, to what we have in, in, in Africa and then have similar opportunities as well. So we've stripped down our app and created a more light app that can talk to, talk to, more, talk to more people. So it's exciting to see that we can broaden the base that we, that we speak to. The other thing that is encouraging is we're starting to see some more smart regulation come through. Um, when, we, when we started in most markets, there wasn't really regulation and I think we were probably operating in a, a world where people didn't really know how to regulate us. And we, we do encourage regulation and like I caveat there, smart regulation. And we're starting to see that come through in, come through in, in a number of markets. I think interestingly enough, Lagos has actually, um, has actually started developing some, some really good rideshare regs. And it's, um, it's one of the, it's one of the markets that's, that's really progressing there. Ghana has, 
of the most progressive rideshare regs in, in sub-Saharan Africa. So it's nice to see that governments are being progressive. Governments are open to talk as well. Um, I think that's that's something that we that we struggled with a little bit before. And now um, governments are more open to engage, which is encouraging. On the on the flip side, there's also challenges with um, challenges with governments that are not there yet. And it's up to us to make sure that we engage, build the right relationships so that we can 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 try and get smart regs everywhere. It's just easier to operate within that that framework. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, friends. And thank you so much, Kaguri. I'm looking out for questions. There are not many questions coming along and our session is going to come to an end very soon. So, you know, in the current climate, you know, we're going through COVID at the moment. Um, I, I know that that has an impact on everything. So if anything, if, if you could both um, give me some sort of indication of how COVID has affected things, um, how you plan to navigate through this period of time. We have no idea how short or how long it's going to last and what type of impact you think it's having in Africa um, right now. Um, so if I start with friends this time, thank you. Yeah, yeah. so when, when COVID hit us, it happened really quickly. We, we saw it coming and I remember sometime in February, they, uh, it, was, it was being spoken about and we never actually thought it would come as, 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 quick, as, quick, as quick as it did. And suddenly as, as a business, our entire organization moved from working in offices to, to working from home. And pretty much overnight, we were able to, to convert and there's, and there's tens of thousands of employees. So we were able to, to do that really quickly to make sure that we could keep our employees safe. So I suppose that was the first step that we had to take. And thankfully, as a, as a tech company, Zoom is something we use all day. So it was relatively easy to transition, but it's not, it's not a rule that it's easy. Obviously, everybody has their own personal situation. And um, if you've got kids at home, it's, 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 it's definitely more difficult, especially if you've got kids at home in the middle of a lockdown. So I think employee-wise, that, that was something that we had to adjust to. And I think the, the company has been really good with, um, with accommodating, accommodating people. We are actually on a, a work from home, optional work from home until June um, 2021. So I'm actually back at the office. Some people are back at the office. So I think that just within the company that that happened, but then in our business, it, it impacted us drastically. So imagine we're we're a, we're a business that relies on mobility, and suddenly cities were locked down. In, for example, in Nigeria, everything was switched off. We had to switch off the app. In South Africa, the um, South Africa, the lockdowns were very very heavy, and we could only move in certain hours. And we had to find ways to get our business up again and to get driver partners moving. So for us, it's very important that driver partners can earn. And um, we had to be creative in, in pivoting to, to find different opportunities. So we moved into the delivery space. I, um, I, I referred to it briefly earlier in my, in my chat, but yeah, we, we launched a, a C2C product. So you can now, on your Uber app, you can request what we call Uber Connect and you'll have a motorbike or a car arrive and you can put your package in there and real time do a, do a more short, short delivery. It's not, it's not the, the same scale as what, as what COBA 360 is doing, but it is a, but it's a sad. And we actually started getting people moving. The other thing that was really good to see is our, we were lucky to have Uber Eats and uh, Uber Eats, obviously people weren't able to, to go to restaurants. So people were eating in and because of the, because of the situation, it's not really, it's not necessarily so safe to go out to the grocery store. So we added convenience, grocery and convenience to the, to the app. So Eats Essentials was, was now available on, on the Uber Eats app, which it wasn't before. And another benefit there is now driver partners can actually do deliveries on, on Uber Eats because, um, um, because there's now this additional demand. So that was, that was really good. And then I think the last piece is, is around safety, um, hygiene safety, which was brand new for us. And we, it was never something that we really had to consider. And quickly we had to move to, um, uh, yeah, quickly we had to get to move and adjust to adjust to that. So I think, yeah, we had to, we had to move quickly and pivot and keep our business afloat in a difficult time. 
Thank you very much for that, friends. That was a very detailed response. Um, I'm sure, Kagure, um, I'm, I'm not sure whether you could give us a bit more concise. We're running out of time. I've given some extra time because we started late, um, but, but I'm going to leave the last note to you, if that's OK. okay. Um, I, I think that uh, generally COVID has created a, quite a bit of challenges, but also opportunities. Um, the challenges we, uh, we saw was that now there was a lot of strict regulations in terms of how cargo moves in between countries. It meant we got to figure out how, you know, uh, drivers are tested, how things are moving, delays all of a sudden doubled and what we're used to. That was a challenge. So being able to adapt to this, uh, we saw that industries we'd relied on crashed. While industries we had not put a lot of effort in like uh, moving a lot of agricultural food all of, all of a sudden became a priority to everybody. Everybody just needed food. There was less manufacturing for non-essential cargo. And so uh, just being able to pivot to that. The third thing was that there's unique challenges that exist to say, uh, to uh, COVID that, you know, they're mainly there in Africa, West Africa in particular. When you tell people to work from home, you're telling people to work from home where there's no electricity during the day. And um, I think this is a huge challenge you see in our markets like Ghana, Nigeria, where people rely on generators. And so when we tell people work from home, we had to figure out just beyond, okay, go work from home, you have data. How do you get people to have their computers charged? How do you cater to the increased cost in bills um, and really thinking about it? And so it's created opportunity for growth for us. It's given us an opportunity to rethink how we structure our teams and our staff members to create opportunities. Um, and what we're now seeing is our business has actually doubled during this COVID fantastic. in terms of our- That's fantastic, business. yeah. So again, it's quickly adapting as helping and supporting the team where there's challenges because the challenges are unique in Africa. And then, you know, focusing eye on the goal, eye on the goal. Ultimately, we've got to sell the story of growth in Africa. And again, challenges will continue being there. And finally, diversification. Being in multiple countries will always help a startup in Africa. When you see the turmoil we've seen in Nigeria, when you see curfews, when you see political instability, having multiple countries um, that we are able to operate in. Um, so we have presence in 16 countries, um, six of offices in six countries, has allowed us to continue to grow and to weather the storm that is COVID and everything else that 2020 has brought. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. Um, we've come to the end of our session today. Thank you so much, Kaguri, and thank you so much, Franz. Um, I'm looking forward to the future of mobility in Africa. It benefits us all. And I think I, I like the message that you just gave us, Kaguri. I think it's the common theme. Challenges are opportunities at the end of the day. And it's always a matter of perspective. So thank you very much for sharing that with us. And um, don't forget, you can, you can contact each other in the text position app. You can DM, you can actually talk to each other in VIP lounges and stuff like that. So if you want to speak some more about this topic or any other topics, please do so and enjoy the rest of the text position.